Today I'll be doing a review of Auto Arts Alfa Romero 1750 GTV. I'm sorry if I don't have all the pronunciations correct on this video. I don't speak Italian and I don't know all the Italian names. And to be honest with you, I don't really know a whole lot about this car. So I won't be. I probably won't be calling the current engine the correct name or anything like that. This one I was going to start out with it in the box. As you can see here, it cost me, the price is labeled at $80. However, I didn't buy it for that much. I was lucky enough to get it at a local store, uh, store, Fastlane Classic Cars, that has a fantastic diecast store. I was able to bargain this down to $70. And after looking online, after purchasing on it, I figured out I got an amazing deal. Because the cheapest price I could find on this car, shipped to my door, was $130. So let's get this, babe. let's have a look at this box. Nothing much to see. Not suitable for children under 14 years old. Long term sunlight may damage it. Here, it shows off some of its features. Let's get this out of the box. As you can see, it's a styrofoam container. Auto, Auto Art styrofoam containers generally show that they have more detail than their traditional window box counterparts. And this is true for this model as well. Take the top off. Auto Art usually covers their cars in tissue. I had to use some for my home because I threw away my what I previously had. Here we can see it. It's a beautiful little car. And when I say little, I do mean it's little. Wait for the camera to get in focus here. There we go. Here you can see. Well, let's just look at it for a second. Just to give you some scale of the size. Here's the car. And lined up with the back bumper is green lights, Fleetwood Bounder. Sure, a lot of you guys have one of these. Well, that's a really small car. And there's Meister's 180SL. Small little sports car from the 50s, and it's bigger than it. Even though it's in such a small package, all of AutoArt's details are there in full quantity. Here we can see the fantastic headlights, turn signals, 
traditional Alfa Romeo shield triangle grille. It might be hard to see in the video, but it's even got the Alfa Romeo crest there. With the cross on one side and the uh, snake eating a man on the other. It's supposed, supposedly it's a serpent sticking its tie out, but it looks like a snake eating a man. And going back to Alfa Romeo's original roots with the shield, it, it is a serpent eating a man. Here we can have see a 1750 badge. Also notice, if you look straight on, mirror on this side, but not on this side. That's correct. I haven't broken it off or anything. Um. You can also might be able to see the perforated grill. It's kind of hard to notice because it's not very bright. Okay, here we go. Now I've adjusted my light so it's a little easier to see. You should be able to notice the perforated grill in there. Here we can see the fantastic wheel. AutoArt did an amazing job replicating these wheels. It's got almost a budget car look to it, but in a really Italian beauty. Just enough chrome to denote that it's sporty and the whole but it looks more like almost like a steel wheel from modern day. You can see the very, very small Burtone batch right there. Crisp shut lines. One thing I will point out is that on this model, it doesn't have sealed windows on the side, which makes it kind of a pain for keeping dust out of it. It's just a beautiful little car. You can see that the around fuel door, very crisp. And unlike most Alfa Romeo's nowadays, real Alfa Romeo's, it doesn't have rust. Here we can see the tail lights, the rear bumper, and the rear exhaust. 1750. Again, the Alpha logo on the back trunk. And then the center reverse light, real well. So let's move into some of its opening features. I'll start off with the trunk, because that's always the most boring. But even here, AutoArt manages to amaze. You can see they even painted the little rubber seal around the sides of it. And it might be hard to tell. Let's see if it can get focused. For some reason it's not wanting to focus, but there is an Alfa Romero 
badge inside molded into the trunk and it's a really neat detail that auto art didn't have to include here we can see the fantastic interior with the center mounted shift jar the various dials and gauges, the radio, the wood trim, and of course the steering wheel. All of this is just beautiful, as is typical of auto art. You might be able to notice from the texture on the floor that it does have carpet, as is true with almost all auto arts, at least modern day. But all the buttons and gauges are on there. My only complaint with this car is that it has, right below the shifter, you might be able to see some switches, and those aren't in there in. They're not molded in, they're just kind of painted on with the, uh, whatever they use for the wood, the sticker. You can also see the seats. Are well molded. Sorry about that. Knocked the car down. Also, I'm sorry if there's any sort of frame rate issue. I'm not sure what that problem is. I don't know if that will show up on the video or not. The reason why I got this mod was able to bargain down the price is because the hood doesn't stay open. And that's a common issue for auto arts. Here we can see some writing on the underside of the hood. And I believe it's also an inspection sheet on this side. It's kind of hard to see. But here we can see, I think it's supposed to be like a dealership and then some other warning labels or something. I can't quite read it because it's so small. Here we can see the famous Alfa Romero engine. I believe it's a straight six, but I may be wrong on that. But as you can see, the detail is wonderful, and with the battery box, all the fluid, the brake booster, all that, all that detail is there. The engine goes straight through, although it's kind of hard to point out. Oh, I'm sorry, it does, it's got a four-cylinder, which is even more impressive. It's a 1.8 liter four-cylinder that made 118 horsepower. That's a lot of horsepower for a four cylinder from this time period, and it's not too shabby from this current day either. And keep in mind that this is a very small, lightweight little car. So it would have been very fun to drive and very fast for its day. It would be Sort of like a classic version of a BMW M2. Not super powerful, but fun to drive in the corners. I mean, we can see all that detail is there in the engine. Final thoughts? 
overall, this is a very good cart. I'm glad to have it in my collection. Only downsides to it is the printed on stickers uh, on the interior and the fact that it has no side windows. Overall, I think if you could get this car for a similar price that I did, around $80 or so, it's a very good car. If you once you get around to the if you're spending over 100, 125, then it becomes less of a very obvious value because you can get just as good if not better cars. However, if you really want a very nice Alfa Romeo, this is the one to have. It's just so beautiful. Everything done on it is so perfect. I cannot stress that enough. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.